Welcome to basic setup of the Vista 20P Home Alarm System, Part 10. Wow, up to Part 10 already? Eh, nevertheless. Here's a list of the previous nine parts, and I'm hoping later I can squeeze some easy to click on links to go and view them. Today's topic of discussion is the automatic voice dialer system. When we take a look at your basic home security system, we find out it does an outstanding job of notifying you locally when the alarm goes off. You have sirens, strobe lights, and even fog machines in some cases. But what happens when you're not home? Well, that's where this little device comes in handy. This here is the two-channel AD2001 automatic voice pager dialer. Inquiry minds may want to know, why did I pick an auto dialer instead of just going with a monitored system? Well, let me share a little parody I threw together. It shares my thoughts on monitored systems. Well, I don't know anybody personally that installs monitored systems. So, to find someone, I need to find a large group of people. You usually find large groups in cities. It doesn't matter which city. All they're going to do is answer the phone. And I don't like this group of people. They look suspicious. Ah, here's a trustworthy looking group of people. This guy over here says he'll put a system in and monitor it for $40 a month. Ah, but this guy over here says he'll do it for $21 a month. We'll go with him. Unfortunately, the guy that he subcontracted to do the monitoring, this guy back here, is a burglar and he got the job so that he could research people's alarm systems, when they're home, not home, when they activate their alarm, and what the response time is on an alarm call. Just about everything he needs for his trade. Somehow I don't think I'm getting my $21 a month worth out of this company. So I'll drop back to my tried and true. My auto dialer won't judge me and calls me direct when there's a problem. Alright, let's see the auto dialer in action. First, I'll trigger an alarm. The local siren goes off and the local strobe light. At the same time, the auto dialer activates. The first phone number is then dialed. Which then in turn causes my cell phone to ring and vibrate. I see the calls from home, so I answer it. At which point the auto dialer sends its pre recorded message. This is your home alarm system. Your house alarm has been activated. This is your home alarm system. Your house alarm has been activated. I now have three choices. I can press the one key. This lets me listen in on the auto dialer's microphone so I can hear what's going on at the house. Or I can press the two key. This allows me to talk over the auto dialer speaker. That way I can say something intelligent like, Hey you, stop robbing me. Or I can press 1 followed by pound, pound. This resets the auto dialer so that it's ready for another alarm condition. And if I don't answer my phone, the auto dialer will try up to three other phone numbers. Oh yes, as a side note, this really is my phone. It's not a Smithsonian Institute exhibit. 12 years old and it still works. Time for the technical details. Let's talk wiring. On the back side of the unit, in the lower left hand corner, you'll find most of your electrical contacts. They're actually under this removable cover. You'll notice the cover is solid, with absolutely no way of getting wiring into the electrical contacts. So I had to drill a hole to provide access. Why would a company make a design like this? Probably because once you drill the hole, now you can't return it. Anyway, there's three ways to provide power to this unit. You have your standard plug-in wall wart. 12 volts DC plugs in to the top of the box. And for a small fee, well actually a large fee, you can purchase backup power battery packs. Or, if you can operate this unit in standalone interface mode, whatever that is, pause for effect. Oh, okay, I'll tell you. You don't actually need an alarm panel to use this unit. What you do is plug in your power supply here, plug in a local siren here, then attach a set of sensor contacts here, and a second set of contact sensors here, and finally a standard telephone plug. You would then have a mini alarm system. It would only have two zones, maybe like for an apartment. that's got one door and one window. When the sensor opens, the local alarm sounds, and your cell phone is called. All this is done without an alarm panel. Finally, the last way you can power this is with your alarm panel. Hook up 12 volts DC to these contacts here, and the power source inside the Vista panel would be contacts number four and five, your auxiliary power output. Pay very close attention to the 600 milliamp maximum current allowed. Remember, you're already using this power source for control panels and sensors and stuff. If you exceed 600 milliamps, your panel might start doing some weird stuff. Moving on to trigger wiring. Much of the versatility of an auto dialer is defined by how many channels there are. 
This unit here has two channels. This would be convenient if you wanted an alarm message on one channel and maybe a fire message for the second channel. An auto dialer with more channels would allow for more accurate reporting as to what the alarm condition is. For example, four channels could report an active alarm, the front door has been opened, your safe has been opened, a remotely alarmed building has been entered, pretty much anything you can imagine. In this video, we'll activate the auto dialer anytime you have an alarm condition on contacts 3 and 4. Now the user's manual states that you can hook it directly to the alarm output. Simply install a 1K resistor into the circuit as shown. However, the dealer that I purchased this equipment from strongly recommended against this. They said they see a high failure rate in auto dialers that are wired this way. And then they went on to say, you should wire it using dry contacts only. In other words, you're looking for an open or a short. To accomplish this, let me introduce to you the relay. It's actually very simple to use. You take the two alarm output wires from your panel and then hook them up to the relay right here. Then when an alarm is activated, some magic happens inside this little black box. Then your dry contact, open or short, comes out of these two wires. Hook these two wires up to channel one on your auto dialer and you're good to go. The relay I used here in my example is an ELK912 relay. Most security stores should carry this. Let's take a look at some of the specifications. Nominal operating voltage is 12 volts which coincidentally happens to match your alarm output voltage. The additional current drain caused by an extra relay, 30 milliamps, which is actually pretty low. Remember you're limited to 2 amps on your alarm output, or stated another way, 2000 milliamps. Let me help clarify a real head scratcher. As you work with relays, you'll see statements like this, Form C contacts. Now what on earth could that possibly mean? Essentially, the form describes the internal wiring configuration of the relay. Let's head over to my drawing board. Form C means that the relay can be wired either normally open or normally closed. For versatility, this is the preferred form. Form B has only one position, and that's normally closed. Likewise, Form A is a one position, normally open. Form D, on the other hand, is an odd one, called make before break. They're very difficult to find. The average person would never use this type of relay. In addition to this ELK912 relay, you could use a 4229 expansion module. It has two Form C relays on board and gives you eight more hardwired zones to boot. Or the 4204 expansion module. This unit has a total of four relays on board. If you like the idea of an alarm message as well as a fire message, both being activated by your alarm output, then the ELK941 relay is the one you want. This amazing little device can tell the difference between a steady alarm or a pulsating fire alarm and activate the appropriate trigger on your auto dialer. All right, enough about relay types. Let's look at a schematic. On the right side, you have your Vista panel. Pins 3 and 4 connect to the positive and negative of the relay. The output of the relay is common and normally open. And that's connected to channel 1 and C. And that's it. You're done with the wiring for channel 1. Let's talk about programming the auto dialer. These are the steps we're going to take. Enter the phone numbers to call. Define what type of telephone you're calling from. How many times to try each call. The number of times you're going to send the message. We'll record the message to send. Enable or disable the onboard microphone. And finally, program each channel's operational characteristics. Key buttons that we're going to use while programming. The mode button. Turns the auto dialer on, off, test mode, or program mode. Hold the record button while making your recordings. The P button causes the auto dialer to pause while dialing. Use this when you're dialing extensions or pagers. And the microphone you'll talk into is located right here. Let's start pushing buttons. Press the M key to enter program mode. The first thing we'll program will be the telephone numbers. Press 1 to say yes. It asks which of the four phone numbers do you want to program. Press 1 for your first phone number. Is this phone number a pager? Press 2 for no. Finally, you can type in your phone number. When you're finished, press the asterisk key. Press a 0 to get out a phone number entry. Would you like to program the telephone line information? Press 1 for yes. Is this line tone or pulse? Press 1 for tone. 
Is it a PBX line? Press 2 for no. How many times do we want to attempt to call each phone number? I'm pressing 2 for twice. How many times to repeat the message during each phone call? Press 2 for twice. Do you want to program OGMs? OGM stands for Outgoing Messages. Press 1 for yes. Now we're going to see a series of OGM option screens. Let me take a shot at trying to explain those. In a nutshell, they're just asking how many messages do you want to put in. Option 1 says you want no outgoing messages. Other than making prank calls, I say no use for this option. Option 2, one outgoing message. Option 3, two outgoing messages. And option 4, this means you want an ID message. In other words, who's calling? Something like, this is your house alarm system. And two outgoing messages. Option 4 is what we're going to go with. Okay, it asks, do you want to program OMGs? Press 1 for yes. Do you want option 1? Press 2 for no. Do you want option 2? Press 2 for no. Do you want option 3? Again, press 2 for no. Finally, do you want option 4? Press 1 for absolutely yes. Let's record some messages. First, we record the ID message. Press and hold the R button while you're recording. This is your home alarm system. Release the button when you're done. Next, we record message number one. Your house alarm has been activated. Then we record message number two. Your house safe has been opened. We're all done recording. To hear a playback, press the one button. This is your home alarm system. Your house alarm has been activated. Your house safe has been opened. If you're happy with the messages, press one to accept them. To keep your microphone active, so you can listen in when the alarm calls you, press the number 2 button. Now we have to program the channels. To shorten the video, I will only show you channel number 1's programming. The first step will be, select the channel. Then you enable or disable it. Turn your entry delay on or off, normally only used during the standalone system. Then your exit delay. Configure your channel inputs to normally open or normally closed. Decide if your trigger will be momentary or continuous. Let me define what that means. You can drive this auto dialer using relays controlled by your alarm system. I'll show this procedure in another video. You can program the relay to close for two seconds. Then it opens. This will be momentary. Continuous is how we wired the auto dialer in this video. When the alarm output sounds, the auto dialer operates. The next step, we decide if we dial phone number 1 and or phone number 2. Do we send the first outgoing message or do we send the second outgoing message? Finally, there's an accept screen saying all entries are complete. Let's see what this looks like. Channel 1. Enable it. No exit delay. No entry delay. Normally open contacts. Continuous selected. We will dial phone number 1. Don't dial phone number 2. Send outgoing message 1. Do not send outgoing message 2. 1 to accept all entries. 0 to exit channel programming. The M button to exit programming. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.